Yes, this motor here is receiving high voltage and low voltage at the same time. But how is that possible? How can those two different types of voltages work together? Well, this is an ECM motor, an electronically commutated motor. And more and more you're starting to see these in, um, in many homes. Maybe you're used to seeing uh, PSC motors, permanent split capacitor and, and your centrifugal and your blower motor inside of the house or more and more you're starting to see these ECMs. But what it, what, what's in an ECM? Well, you got two parts, essentially. You have the actual motor with the shaft, and you basically have the brains, right? The base here, which goes here on the bottom. Now, um, it's pretty cool. You're actually, you're feeding single phase power, and it converts it to three phase, and so this is an actual three phase motor. So that's what's pretty cool about, about um, what it does. It takes single phase and converts it to three phase. And we can confirm that. And, and you know, in many cases, this motor here doesn't go bad. It's usually this, this part here with all the electronics. But you know, as, as we saw in an earlier video on checking three phase compressors, when you check all of them to each other, it's gonna give you the same ohms, the same resistance. So, we can go ahead and confirm that when, when checking it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it here. I am getting 2.6, put it on this side now, 2.6. Now check the middle and the third one, 2.6. So this motor is good, right? But what tends to go bad are these right here. So, but let's go ahead and explain first what's going on right here. We have a C, we have an L, we have a G, and an N, and then we have numbers here. This C is my common. Yes, the common that comes from 24 volts. Yes, it would have been nice for them to have put it down here because these here receive 24 volts, these numbers here. But no, they have it up here, but that's fine. Now we know that C is common. My line, my L, and my neutral, that's my 208, my 240 volts. Uh, that's my high voltage, and then G is my ground. On the bottom, we have one, two, three, four, five. Um, only one of these can receive 24 volts at any given time. If I send 24 volts to one, it runs in the lowest speed, as you will see right now. We're going to test it with this one. You put 24 volts to one, the lowest speed. You put it on five, that's your highest speed. Now, this specific ECM is a constant torque. Whenever you see the numbers here, it is a constant torque. Every number, it will perform at a specific uh, torque. Uh, so, um, but you can't really do much here in regards to testing. A lot of it, you, you do it on the actual, uh, you first do it here on the, on the motor. And then with this part here, you do it more when there is voltage presence. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and send power to the ECM motor right now. But just to briefly go over again what's going on with the connections here, my high voltage is on top, and this is my low voltage. And you can confirm that because you see the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Um, my L and my N, in this case it's my black and my yellow, that is my high voltage, that's my 208 volts, high voltage. My green is my ground, and my brown is my common. So it would have been nice if they would have put the brown, my common, down here because this is all low voltage, but they have it up here with the high voltage, but that's okay. We know this is common for my 24 volts. And then these numbers here, one would be my lowest torque, uh, lower the, uh, you know, the lowest speed. And as I go up, it increases in torque and, and, and it does a faster speed, which we will see right now. Um, but word of advice, um, because, like I said, this motor is receiving high voltage all the time. What actually gets it to turn on is when it receives 24 volts on any of these numbers. So, um, you do not want to have power come in here, unplug it, because you want to just confirm you have voltage coming in and put it back in. Your motor will probably not turn on anymore. So, once again, I'll repeat. You do not want to have vo high voltage uh, come in here because, you know, let's say I turn on the disconnect and I'm not calling for heating or cooling or fan. 
it's still going to have high voltage up here. Your low voltage is what turns it on, but you'll still have high voltage here. So what I do, I make sure it's off, and I have the disconnect off right now. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. So you just kind of wiggle it. Okay, I have it right here. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on power now. And we mentioned that the black and my yellow are my high voltage, so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and check voltage in there. Go ahead and put it through, through the little space that you can see right in there. Go ahead and check the, the other wire, and I have 208 volts, as you can see right there, 208. So I have high voltage present. I'm not gonna push. I'm not gonna put it in, right? I have to make sure power's off. I want that motor to still work. As I, I turn off power, okay, and that's it. So now we can go ahead and turn power back on. Um, another way you could have done to, you could have done as well is uh, just follow these wires all the way back, and then you can also confirm you have 230 volts. But I always uh, like to do it from here. But I make sure there's no power when I'm checking it, and there's still no power when I put this con connector back here. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So we said that down here, once it receives 24 volts, it's going to get that fan to, to start spinning. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm I have 24 volts. And you see, so I'm checking ground, right? And I'm checking this leg. I have 26 volts, right? I have 24 volts. So when doing the low voltage, um, in my experience, you're okay in just unplugging it and plugging it back in. It's your high voltage, you have to worry about doing that. But I'm gonna put it on one and you're gonna see that, that motor spin. Okay, it's on one. Go ahead and look at that motor. Now it's spinning. Okay, so that's one. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. You see, it, it shuts off because it's not receiving low voltage. It has high voltage present all the time, but that's not what gets it to, to spin. It's receiving low voltage on any of these. I'm gonna put it now on number five. Okay, let's give it a second. This is the highest torque. You can kinda hear and feel the difference here. and I disconnected it. So yes, low voltage is what gets this motor to turn on. Now, these motors here, a lot of the times they go bad because uh, this is a constant torque motor. If you have a dirty filter, a closed, uh, uh, closed vents, an undersized return, um, dirty evaporator coil, you don't have a lot of airflow coming into the system. So, because it's constant torque, it's gonna try to, to meet whatever number you have it on, it's gonna try to meet its torque. So it's gonna pull more amps to meet that specific torque. And because you're pulling more amps, amps are, is heat as well, and this starts to get kind of, um, kind of burnt. You start seeing some yellow uh, color on it because you're pulling more current to make up for it. So it's better to change out a $7 filter than to replace a, 400 to maybe at times a thousand dollar motor just make sure you have airflow because it's as simple as not having enough um, air going in can cause this to pull more current and 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 then these go bad and normally these tend to go bad not so much the motors a visual test that you can do uh, once it's receiving high and low voltage uh, if it starts to kind of dance like if it has two left feet kind of up and down up and down uh, that's a good indication that uh, it's going bad or it already is bad right and like I said when you don't have enough airflow due to the uh, dirty filter dirty evaporator coil closed vents undersized return a blocked return um, it's gonna try to pull more it's gonna try to work harder to pull more air in because they have they are constant torque um, they're gonna try to pull more air but because of that no nothing's free right so it's gonna try to pull more current and current has heat and that's how these go bad. 
they get burned up and you know they have a lot of electronics here so um but yeah simply simply put don't let ecm mot motors intimidate you you intim intimidate them now you know that an ecm motor simply has high voltage and and low voltage present uh, your high voltage is always there right you're not pulling it out and checking voltage and put it putting it back in um you first turn off power have it in your hand check if you have voltage okay great go ahead and um leave power off still put it back in and then you can turn power on once it's connected you're isolating it but down here is what, what receives your 24 volts and your common is over here already present so ecm motors are pretty cool to work on of course they're not it's not cool when they stop working because they're pretty pricey but just by simply having enough um, airflow can um, uh, definitely increase the life expectancy of, of an ECM motor. I hope this video helps and I'll catch you on the next one.